Hey guys, today I have another laptop to show you guys and this is the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 UM535. It is a 15 inch laptop with an OLED display and it has an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU, a GeForce RTX 3050 Ti GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte SSD. Um, this retailed last year for about $1500 US uh, MSRP. But I actually got this on warehouse deals uh, from Amazon for significantly cheaper than that, actually. I got this for about $800 on Amazon warehouse deals. So this is a really good deal for me. I am, uh, I think I got it because it was in acceptable condition, which is Amazon's lowest um, rating, I guess, for their warehouse items. But even though it says acceptable, this laptop actually came to me in, I think, very good condition. So it actually turned out to be a very good deal for me. And uh, I was actually looking for a, a laptop that can do gaming and also had like a nice display. And there really isn't that many OLED laptops out there still to this day. I remember when the first OLED laptops came on the market. I think that was back in 2016 with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga and the Alienware 13. Those were some of the first OLED laptops on the market. So that was back in 2016. And for some reason, still to this day, we don't see that many OLED laptops. I mean. Sure, you see some from Gigabyte, from Razer, and from Asus, but Lenovo looks like they don't really make OLED laptops anymore, and neither do Alienware, which is weird. They do, they did have them, but they don't really sell them anymore, which is weird. Um, but yeah, still to this day, you don't see OLED laptops that like that common. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I don't know why. Um, you know, you think in seven years OLED technology uh, has improved and it's gone down in price, but. Yeah, still you don't see that many laptops with OLED uh, and I just wanted to have like a nice gaming laptop with OLED which Asus for some reason does not put on their ROG gaming laptops. So Asus' whole ROG line, none of them have OLED displays which is unfortunate or mini LED for that matter. Yeah, I, it's weird. They just have the standard IPS displays. Maybe this has to do with the limitations of refresh rate on OLED panels and generally gamers care more about refresh rate than for uh, the color, you know, accuracy or contrast. but. But still, it would be nice if they had an ROG uh, gaming laptop with OLED. So, yeah, basically I'm relegated to the Asus ZenBooks or the the Razer Blades, which are too expensive. Um, yeah, I basically had to go for this if I wanted a, a laptop that can do both gaming and was OLED. Very few choices out there. Um, I did not want to pay, you know, however much money money, money for the uh, Razer Mini LED laptop. So, so here we are with the Asus ZenBook 15. Pro, um, I wonder how this laptop is going to do because this is a pretty thin and light laptop here. It weighs about 4.4 pounds, which is quite uh, good. That's a good that's a good weight for a laptop with a 3050 Ti GPU and um, a Ryzen 9 inside of it. Uh, yeah, it's actually not bad for a you know just comparing this to a gaming laptop. Um, it's not a bad weight. So it's fairly thin, thin and light. Not the thinnest or the lightest, but definitely on the thin and light side. And it's just like with other Zen books, um, it has a pretty understated design. So uh, that's one thing that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like an ROG laptop because it isn't. Um, and that's the difference between really the Zen book line and the ROG line. I would say it's the design aesthetic. Although the ROG line uh, has potentially, you know, more powerful GPUs and CPUs and whatever, but. The ZenBook line, um, some of them like this one still have fairly powerful GPUs and CPUs, but the main difference being the design aesthetic, right? You can see how plain this aesthetic looks because it's not trying to stand out. Whereas comparing this with my, uh, this is also my other 15 inch Asus laptop, the ROG Strix G15. This, uh, this is definitely, you can see how much more gamery looking, right? The design aesthetic is very different. It definitely stands out more, tries to appeal to the gamers more, has these, um, LED lights right at the bottom right here. That's something the ZenBook line does not do. It's the the ZenBook line is really marketed towards people who are uh, business professionals and creative artists. Is really what they're marketing to, or just people upgrading from a Vivo book, which is really their kind of uh, lower line but kind of similar aesthetic. Uh, the upgrade for the Vivo book is essentially the ZenBook. Um, so yeah. It's so unfortunate, I wish the ROG laptops would have OLED because then I can have the cool aesthetic and also have, you know, the specs that I want. Anyways, uh, let's go over the ZenBook Pro 15. 
So if you look at it in terms of the ports, it's actually not that much uh, for this kind of laptop. So you have one USB-C here, which does not support DisplayPort or Thunderbolt, by the way. This is only um, just a regular USB-C port. And then uh, you have a headphone microphone combination jack right there. Nothing else here, just the DC uh, AC adapter and some uh, fan vents and that's it. And then on the left side, yeah, what you get is a full size HDMI port and uh, one USB 3 port and or USB A port I should say. Um, and uh, yeah, a SD card reader, full sized one. And that's really it. That's all you get on this laptop, which is kind of disappointing, right? It's a, it's like a full-size 15-inch laptop. It's designed for professionals, right? Um, not exactly gamers, I guess, although it can do gaming. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's designed towards professionals, and it only has one USB-A port and one USB-C port, which can't even do DisplayPort or Thunderbolt. So it's a little bit perplexing why Asus did not put more ports on this thing. So I'm a little bit disappointed in the port selection. This is like a port selection you would find on a 13-inch uh, Ultrabook. <laughs> like on my HP Dragonfly Elite, it's fine because that's a 13-inch Ultrabook. I can understand, uh, or the Dell XPS 13. I can understand why those laptops don't have many ports. Um, but this, you know, this is a 15-inch laptop with a pretty substantial uh, CPU and GPU. So I don't know why they didn't uh, put in more ports. It does have an ergo lift hinge, so the laptop actually lifts up. As you guys can see better from this angle, I think. If I lift up, lift up the display, see the laptop lifts up like that. They do something similar with their ROG Zephyrus line. And a lot of the laptops actually have that kind of similar design. <clears throat> you don't have the Scream Pad uh, Plus here, so you don't have the... this. They On the other ZenBook laptops, some of them have like a, another secondary display here which they call the screen pad plus um, or the screen pad but uh, yeah it, they don't have it on this model for some reason I don't know why uh, it was a cool feature right to have but they don't have it here unfortunately um, yeah so you can see the features here a lot of stickers Ryzen 9 uh, RTX Alexa enabled so you have your Amazon Alexa here actually um, you have OLED HDR that's the main reason why um, I got this laptop basically uh, you have a uh, Windows Hello Right login, so you just like detect your face. We go lift hinge as mentioned. Um, yeah, and the the U.S. military grade stuff is interesting because uh, Asus has done that with um, a lot of their high end laptops. Really, is uh, and they're all these M books. I believe they have the military standards um, certification essentially. All right, um, <clears throat> the keyboard is is fine, and I think this is one area where the Zen books. Um, kind of trail I think the ROG laptops. I do prefer the ROG laptops keyboard more. Uh, so the Zenbook keyboard is just okay. It's always been just okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. Um, so yeah it's it's always been just okay for me but I always preferred um, something like like yeah even the Asus ROG keyboards have been better and then and, and obviously no comparison to my Alienware um, Ryzen's uh, Cherry MX switches right. Because Alienware has actually some laptops with uh, Cherry MX keyboards. Obviously, this is not comparable to that. Um, but it's not even comparable to the, the Asus ROG Strix keyboard I have, actually. Um, but it's just okay, you know. It's it's usable for sure. Um, oh, I know my MacBook Air or my HP Dragonfly Elite actually all have better keyboards than this. Uh, and those are kind of more business-level laptops. And yeah, ThinkPad, of course, as well, have, has better keyboards than this. But it's okay. It's usable. They also have a numpad here, so it's cool that they they fit in a numpad. Uh, not all 15-inch laptops can fit in a numpad. My Asus, um, the RG Strix, does not have that. Um, and yeah, otherwise, uh, the main thing to uh, consider for this laptop is really just uh, the amazing OLED display here. All right, so the Windows Hello works pretty well, so I can just uh, look at it. Um, Windows Hello, and uh, I should log in like that. Okay. There we go. Um, so yeah, pretty fast login. This is a touch screen, by the way. So that's another cool thing to have, I guess. It's not essential for a gaming laptop to have a touch screen, but it's nice to have. Um, and yeah, we're just going to test out some of the stuff. Uh, first, let's test out the audio. Right? I always like to test out the audio on a laptop and listen to this. It does 
not get very loud. This is the maximum volume. Uh, obviously, I think this trails my ROG laptop in terms of a sound. But maybe that's to be expected, because this is not a, meant to be a gaming laptop. It's meant for like creative professionals, I guess. But you guys can hear a little bit. This is the maximum volume. So yeah, uh, it's kind of disappointing. I mean, it's fairly similar to the performance of a 13-inch Ultrabook. Honestly, my HP Dragonfly Elite and my MacBook Air uh, M2, which are both 13-inch, sound sound better than this. So this is, yeah, it's more equivalent to like a regular 13-inch laptop with like just mediocre speakers. So yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, yeah, I wish they could put better speakers on here. The screen is a glossy screen, which I actually don't really like. It's too much reflection. Um, as you guys can see, there's a lot of reflection on the screen. Um, but yeah, uh, also it's the uh, keyboard lights, if that was blinking during the video, um, I think that's just how my camera is. But it, this is just the keyboard backlight. So that's my maybe why it was like that. See, it, it's not actually blinking like this in, in real life, of course. Um, all right, let's gonna try some gaming. I'm gonna do some Far Cry 5. And uh, let's check out the performance of Far Cry 5 on uh, the Zenbook Pro 15. Alright, so I'm playing Far Cry 5 right now, uh, and everything is turned up to actually Ultra. So, you guys can see, I go into the video options, and everything is set to Ultra right now. And I really tried to put everything on HD textures on, anti-aliasing, motion blur, V-Sync, just because I want to push as much as I can out of this GPU to see how well it does because it is it is a 3050 Ti but the thing about laptop GPUs is that it's so dependent on um, what wattage and stuff like the TDP and the GPU wattage and also you know how much power um, this laptop can handle how much heat this laptop can handle so because it's so dependent um, that's why I really want to just push this GPU as much as I can to see how much I can get out of this this laptop right um, so yeah uh, another thing is like because it only has one USB uh, a port once I plug in my mouse I can't use any other USB a or traditional USB plug-in accessory which is yeah if you guys plan to use this one for gaming the Zenbook Pro 15 just be aware that if you're gonna use multiple peripherals it's better to use a USB hub uh, because this thing does not come with many USB ports unfortunately I don't know why uh, there's clearly enough space for it in this laptop. It's a 15 inch, but uh, I don't know why it has as much port selection as a 13 inch ultra book <laughs> um, But yeah right now, you know, I have everything set to ultra all the options turned on running about 30 FPS So just on the edge of playable I guess 30 FPS is generally considered the minimum for play playability and this refresh rate is a uh, uh, 60 Hertz I believe because it's an OLED panel. So that's one of the reasons why I think um, a lot of gaming laptops don't have OLED is because of the refresh rate limitations right now. Just IPS displays have much better refresh rates. Yeah, so until OLED refresh rates get up there, I think Razer has some, you know, OLED laptops with high refresh rates. But I think besides Razer, I don't really see many other laptops have uh, OLED displays with high refresh rates. So yeah, really about getting about 30 FPS here. And the dis display, you know, the main part of the uh, Asus... Zenbook Pro is the OLED display, which looks gorgeous. Of course, do I, I don't really need to say too much about this because everyone knows OLED displays look amazing. And um, this being one of the very few laptops out there that can that can play some games and also have an OLED display, you know, that's why I decided to pick this one up when I saw the deal. It's like, okay, I play games and I want an OLED display because everything looks more vibrant and, uh, you know, high contrast and everything. So... Yeah, why not? Just wanted to 
um, check this laptop out and yeah of course the display does not disappoint it's a great display it's a 1080p display by the way which is also something I wanted because most OLED displays out there on laptops are 4k and the thing about 4k is if you're going to run a game in 4k you're going to really need to have a good GPU else you're just not going to push enough um, frame rate out of it so so I actually like the fact that this is an OLED panel that's 1080p, not 4K. That means actually, actually I can get better performance out of this on games. Because yeah, like 4K OLED panels are on a lot of other laptops and you're just not going to get very high frame rates out of games with a 4K display. So I'm, I'm actually very glad that this is a 1080p panel. Not many laptops have 1080p OLED displays, right? Out of all the laptops with OLED displays, I would say yeah, the majority have 4K displays, which I actually don't want. So it's cool, this one has, uh, just sticks to 1080, which makes it better for gaming. But yeah, gives about 30 FPS on this. Um, everything turned up to ultra and full settings, which is, um, okay, you know? I'm not expecting anything better than this from a 3050 Ti, because I heard the 3050 Ti is not a very, like, impressive GPU to begin with. Um, <laughs> a lot of people says, uh, I read some reviews online, and some people say, yeah, it runs slower than a 1660 Ti. So, <laughs> yeah, the 3050 Ti is not a great GPU. Um, and the fact that it's able to push 30 frames on this on max settings, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm okay with this. I'm not expecting any kind of really great performance out of it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's acceptable for me. Alright guys, so now I'm using my Asus ROG Strix G15 to run Far Cry 5 and uh, just to show you guys the comparison between these two laptops if you guys are ever considering whether to go for the Zenbook Pro 15 or the Asus ROG Strix G15 because um, they're both like around the same price I guess except this one is obviously more focused towards gaming, it's an ROG laptop the main differences are the um, this ROG Strix, uh, obviously the display is not OLED, it's it's IPS, but it has a 144Hz refresh rate, so it has a higher refresh rate. It has a more gamery looking design. So um, if you look at the, the bottom laptop here, you can see the LEDs glowing and stuff. Uh, it's definitely more of a cooler design. And uh, the speakers are better on the, on the uh, Strix, as you guys can hear. The speakers get a lot louder. Uh, in general, they're just better speakers than the Zenbook. Yeah, so you guys can hear the speakers are pretty nice. And uh, the keyboard is actually, uh, it's better as well. Uh, well, you don't have access to a numpad, but you do have bigger keys, which are easier to hit. You got like dedicated media controls here. Um, you also have the Asus Armory crate, uh, which is something that you don't get on the Zenbooks. Uh, right, this is the ROG Armory is an application only for ROG laptops. So you can use it to optimize some games and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I would say, um, oh, <laughs> some, uh, some shit's going down outside, but yeah, uh, generally what you get with the Asus ROG line compared to the Zenbook line, better speakers, um, better keyboard, because the keys are easier to hit and everything, um, more cool gamery aesthetic for the design, higher refresh rate for the display. Hope you're well, ma'am. So I think that's that's the main differences uh, between, I would say, the ROG and the Zenbook. Um, but what you're giving up, of course, is that beautiful OLED display. This display is nice, but it's not not the OLED display of the Zenbook. And yeah, um, I have every setting turned up to Ultra on this uh, laptop as well. So exact same settings as on the Zenbook. So everything's set to Ultra. Uh, V-Sync on, everything's been turned on, and I'm getting about still 30 FPS, so still about the similar FPS to the Zenbook, which is actually kind of impressive for the Zenbook, because the Zenbook is not meant to be a gaming laptop like the Strix is, yet the performance is, uh, is similar, actually. So they both have 3050 Ti GPUs, by the way. Same GPU, uh, just different, um, different laptops, same GPU, right? Uh, yeah, just this one is the Strix G15, and it runs about the 30 FPS, really about the same as the uh, Zenbook, Zenbook Pro 15, so that's uh, pretty impressive actually for the Zenbook Pro 15. But man, the speakers are so much better on this laptop, and the keyboard is much easier, you know, because I can just hit those WASD keys much more easily. Definitely a better laptop strictly for gaming, I would say. Um, the only difference is the display is not as great. 
That's the main drawback compared to the Zenbook. In the weight, I guess, but the weight is similar. It's n it's like 4.6 pounds. It's only like 0.2 pounds more than the the Zenbook Pro. Oh no, that's like a that's like a bad bear. I want to see my bear fight this bear. Yeah, that's oh that bear scared off that bear. <laughs> that's right. You go back to where you came from. Yeah, in, in, in overall, I'd say that the performance is similar, actually, which uh, actually is surprising to me. I thought that the ROG would actually be better in performance compared to the Zenbook Pro, but it's actually similar. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit of a thicker laptop, too, compared to the Zenbook, which means more heat dissipation, you know, better thermal management, I, I would assume. But no, the performance is actually similar. So that's actually more impressive for the Zenbook. Oh, that's uh, innocent. My bad. Anyways, yeah, uh, I would say that's the main difference here. Obviously, you can hear the speakers a lot better. Cooler, more gamery aesthetic. Keyboard is better. Faster refresh rate. But the performance, like just talking about the performance, it's actually similar, surprisingly. Oh yeah, another thing is the ports. So the RG Strix definitely has more ports. If you look at the back here. You can see it uh, definitely has more ports than the Zenbook Pro does, has an Ethernet port here, and on the side you see more USB-A ports to connect more peripherals. Whereas on the Zenbook Pro, yep, you only get one USB-A, one USB-C, and that's it. Um, so really, it's, it's a tough decision if you guys are looking to choose between these two. Uh, the ROG Strix G15 is definitely more focused on, on gaming. Um, it's got more ports, it's got a better sound system, higher refresh rate, and a better keyboard. Whereas the Zenbook Pro, uh, it's geared towards more creative professionals. Although you can use it for gaming, it's not as dedicated for it. Um, you do get that beautiful OLED display, um, but then it lacks the ports. Um, the sound's just, yeah, it's not as good. <laughs> and um, the keyboard is not as good. So really, depends what you're looking for, right? Um, in terms of the weight, they're actually pretty similar. So I wouldn't judge based on the weight. In terms of the size, though, you can see that the, the Zenbook is uh, this entire like little back section here of the ROG. That's, that's, that's bigger than the Zenbook. So you can see there that this whole section here is what's bigger about the ROG Strix. So the Zenbook is definitely a smaller laptop um, and therefore maybe a little bit more portable. But in terms of weight, they're about the same. Um, in terms of performance, they're about the same, surprisingly, as well. As you can see, on Far Cry 5, they both uh, perform pretty similar. Both got about 30 FPS, both have 3050 Ti GPUs. And both have the same CPUs as well, actually, the Ryzen 9 5900HX. Uh, so yeah, um, really comes down to how much do you value that OLED display of the Zenbook Pro, right? If you really care about the display, then the Zenbook Pro is pretty much your only option <laughs> out of the Asus laptops, essentially. I mean, VivoBooks have it too, but VivoBooks is like a lower line. Um, yeah, like basically, if you care about that OLED display, Zenbook is the way to go. Uh, if you care about everything else more, then <laughs> the ROG is the way to go, right? Better speakers, better keyboard, more ports, higher refresh rate, uh, essentially. So, yeah. I don't know, guys. Uh, which one would you go for? Uh, performance, given that the performance is fairly similar, it really comes down to what you value more uh, in the laptop, right? Do you guys care about the display or you guys care about everything else? Like the, the sound, the keyboard, the ports and everything. Um, so it really comes down to that in the design as well. I should say that the ROG does have a cooler design. Now that's subjective, right? Uh, I guess some people prefer the, the more professional look of the Zenbook, but I do like the the Strix is more gamer focused design with the you know RGB lighting and everything. So yeah, that's another thing as well to consider. If you guys care about the the cool RGB stuff, then you know the ROG is definitely the way to go. So that's it. Uh, just want to show you guys the Zenbook Pro 15 um, and how it compares uh, for gaming. You know, comparing to the ROG Strix G15 uh, and uh, seeing which one is better, although it's pretty close. I wouldn't say that uh, there's a clear-cut decision here. So let me know what you guys think, which one would you guys pick for your needs. Um, like for for someone who does uh, purely gaming or occasional gaming, which one would you rather choose? Uh, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.
Alright guys, um, I'm going to be testing the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 versus the Asus ROG Strix G15. Um, both of these displays are set to full brightness and both of the volumes are also set to full. And you guys can hear the difference between these two um, or see the difference between these two because uh, you can see the difference between the IPS display on the ROG versus the OLED display on the ZenBook. Uh, and there's quite a big difference in the displays there, but also the difference in audio because pretty much the ROG Strix's audio is going to drown out the uh, ZenBook's audio. The ZenBook speakers are so pitiful that the ROG speakers are just going to completely uh, drown them out. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you guys can see how much better the ZenBook's display is. So it really is, uh, do you value visuals or do you value the auditory experience? Because <laughs> the ZenBook has a much better display, but the... Uh, the RG Strix has a much better uh, sound system. Anyways, you guys can see the difference between th these two. I'm going to play the same video, uh, both at 1080p displays, of course. You guys can maybe um, try to get the right angle for these two. Actually, yeah, this display tilts up a little bit higher because this is just a lengthier laptop. Yeah, try to get them both. You guys can really see the difference between these two.